Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Faux Show. Today is Thursday, August 6th. My name is Angela. And my name is Chris. And as most of you know, The Faux Show is not a real show. It is a social experience because I don't look at you. I look at the chat which I have here on my iPad. Oh, the chat room? I got that as full screen on my screen. It's over there on a monitor where we see ourselves, but it is in... The best lower third on the internet. Oh, yeah, right there. Embedded over at jblive.tv. We're doing this on a Thursday because, well, we have shenanigans all weekend long. So we have to make some room for the foe right here, right now, in between Tech Talk today and Tech Snap. It is a very important edition of the foe show where we're going to look. What? (laughs) I was just reading the chat room. Where we are going to look at the future of travel. Dun, dun, dun. Where's the soundboard? Come on. (laughs) I could do that. Okay. I got that. (laughs) I could also do. The fit. That's not bad, right? I, yeah. I, mean, that's just, I had that ready to go, so. Yeah. Well, there have been a lot of things, or not a lot of things, but there's, there's a couple things that have come out in like the last week or so that, that deserve some attention. Normally, okay. normally the faux show isn't so focused on being current or modern or with whatever but thing But every thing now and then something comes along that alters the course of humanity. Right. And there's only one show that can properly document it, that is tooled properly to answer all of your questions. That is the faux show, because it's, not a, show. it's not a real show. It's not. So uh, everybody knows about Back to the Future. Everybody knows about hoverboards. Whoa. The, I, I wasn't there yet. I wanted to go there. <laughs> I wanted to so jump right in. Everybody knows about Back to the Future. Everybody knows about because hoverboards. every year there is a meme that says, this is the year that we're supposed to X, right? This is the year that bleh. They give but me every, every time, too. every year it's the same thing. <laughs> it's actually, sometimes it's, it's like twice in one year they do yeah. that. <laughs> it is... It is, and they like. There's a picture of the the clock supposedly from you know, like the, uh, the, the fr- countdown, from, t- yeah, from the uh, car, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what about what about hoverboards? So yeah, okay, hoverboards, hoverboards, right? A hoverboard is a sim- is similar in appearance to a skateboard, but underwent hover conversion. Of course, because right? that's why they call it a hoverboard. So, there is a company that has made a hoverboard. Have I'm you sorry. seen it yet? Actually, I I saw the guy test uh, testing it and I don't know if it's totally legit, but let's watch it. You have a video it of it? Is, I do. Okay, yeah, play this thing and uh, you guys tell me if you think this is legit or not. And uh, is there audio with this? There is, but I decided Oh, you muted it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just All just, right. There's no such thing as impossible. It's just a matter of figuring out how. So, All like right. they built this I, I kind of want to hear what they're saying. Magnetic. You can just turn on a little bit. Let's just turn on a little bit. Yeah, cuz yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, it's just music. Never mind. Never mind. But they really are hovering. They really are hovering. So and it Yeah. So it's nitrogen yeah. cooled and and using magnets. So I'm pretty sure they made this whole like landscape so that it could hover. Now the thing that I notice is that well, I at least pick it this drags. landscape. It does drag. It like, touches the ground, you mean? You do see it touch, touch the, the ground. ground. Yeah. And if they're documenting it with a freaking drone. I know. There it is going over. Right? But there it is going Did over. Did you guys see it's, that drone? It's going over water, too, though. That's Hold pretty. On. Come on. That's legit. It's flying over water, Damn. Ange. How? Look at that. Look yeah, at that. That's I legit. Know. It's flying on water right there. How much cheaper is it to do a drone than a helicopter? Right? Yeah. Like yeah. the. the. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just, it just makes it so much more accessible. So We're going to have one. He's going to go over the. Uh, He's going to go over the water o- while on it. But what's interesting is you see it stop and he has to jump off. Oh, really? Whoa. Oh, that's cool. The good jump, though. That's f- drone footage right there, I bet. That right there is the drone footage. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? You know, we're going to get one of those. We're going to fly over like conventions and stuff like that with our drone. and We're going to have super cool B-roll. It's all about that B-roll. Wow. So this is, I think, pretty early days and pretty unique conditions. And you also, the other thing they're not really telling you is how long does it last like that? Do you get one or two runs from it and then it needs to be recharged or... Oh, no, no. It's a magnet. Well, I, but also there's nitrogen in there and that has to run Oh, out. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. And I'm not exactly sure why it even needs the nitrogen. You know, I didn't like investigate this like super in depth, but it's, it's really interesting. And they take it to a skate park, a really nice skate park. For sure. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. Would you try one? Yes. <laughs> but there wasn't a hesitation. Would there. you try one? Um, I don't know. What would you be worried about falling? I don't know. Didn't hurt your butt. What? Whatever. Your butt. Over water would be really cool. <laughs> I'd be afraid of falling in the water. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. guess I would wear a. Oh, what um, you do if you want to go over water is you build in rockets and they f- fire out the they, they sling and, well, then, and then you got speed. This is true. Yeah. This is true. Or you hook it up to a let's boat. See. They have let's see amazing motion amazing mo. Ah, uh, their kidding. website's down. Yeah, I was going to give you their link, but yeah, uh, their website's down. Dead link. Sorry, guys. Um, learn more at Lexus Amazing in Motion. Yeah, yeah, they ha- yeah. This oh, this is tied to Lexus, huh? Yeah, that's what I said. Lexus oh. made. Oh, oh, I, for some reason I wasn't thinking Lexus, the car dealership or the car maker. 
as being dumb. Oh, this is that same video. Is it? Yeah, I think so. It is. Yeah, but still really neat. So uh, you can find out more on the Lexus website too, I suppose. The tech. Scroll down a little bit. The tech. What's the, the tech? tech? Creating slide required re-engineering core technologies and uncovering the true technical innovations. From assembling uh, maglev technology into a board to finding the right combination of superconductors, magnets, and liquid nitrogen, every step pushed the team to stretch the possibilities of technology. Hmm. I really like the smoke effect. They're not, yeah, the, the <laughs> liquid nitrogen epic. steam. Um, so the hoverboard is constructed from an insulated core containing HTSL, high temperature superconducting blocks. Uh, there are, they are, sorry, these are housed in crypt. Crypto, no, cryostats. That's what the nitrogen's for. Yeah. Reservoirs of liquid nitrogen that cool the superconductors to negative 197 degrees Celsius. Wow. Yeah, that's cold. You got to have a cooling system like a boss to make that work. Yeah. The board is then placed above a track containing permanent magnets. I wonder if that's going to like cause... Don't put your floppy disk down there. Or no fly zone. (laughs) Like, or... um, you know, pay, nobody with pacemaker. I the mean, floppy like, disk <laughs> was finally killed today when the hoverboard became popular. <laughs> yeah, right? when, all, when all roads were revamped. So, yeah, okay. So when the board is cooled to its operating temperature, the track's magnetic flux lines are pinned into oh, place. Oh, it's got a flux line, guys. Maintaining the hover height of the board. Liquid nitrogen filled um, cryostat inlaid with superconducting blocks and track of permanent magnets. Wow. M- magnetic freaking. Look at that. That's kind of crazy looking. Wow. That is cool. Yeah, freaking magnetic hoverboards. That's great. That is, man, such good pictures. Yeah, they really, yeah, next. uh, Oh, there's a car. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, look, we parked a car next to this hoverboard. (laughs) Oh, okay, here we go. Here's some details. Aside from um, fitting big technology into a very small package wrapped in a design that is uniquely Lexus, the hoverboard features the iconic Lexus spindle grill signature shape and uses materials found across the Lexus brand from the high tech to natural bamboo. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it is cool. It has 50 ounces of liquid nitrogen, 32 wow. superconductor bulks, and um, 11.5 kilograms is the weight. Of All right, the- Lexus, call me when you build this into a car, okay? Then I'm going to be really impressed. Ooh, right? Right, a hovercraft, right? Yeah, yeah, I want a hovercraft. Shoot. I wonder if they like got skateboarding people. Of course. To come out yeah, of course. and try it out. Of course, look at that guy. It. You think that guy doesn't know how to ride a skateboard? Look at that guy. He knows yeah. how to ride a skateboard. Pariah Ford just said, uh, "Woo, Thursday faux show, so sweet." Look at that. Look at that guy going that across the water really right cool. there. Look I at that like reflection. that. I like that. Okay, you've wow. whetted my appetite, Andrews. Okay. I want to know what our next future travel device is. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Do we have this a link is, to this in the show this notes? That's cool. No. Okay, we, we'll put a link to that in we the show will notes because they got some. Second. They got some su- super cool diagrams and stuff like that. I, uh, Rikai says, Angela and Chris Lass, this is the part of why I like science fiction. It inspires and motivates to do crazy, awesome right? things. Right? You know, there, Actually, there's a good yeah. point to that, too. Uh, William Shatner did a documentary where he went around and interviewed a bunch of NASA scientists and whatnot, and they all talked about how Star Trek compelled them uh, to get into it. And Marty Cooper, the guy that cre- uh, Martin Cooper, the guy that created one of the first cell phones, uh, said that he was inspired by the Star Trek communicator. And so it's no, it's no surprise we walk around and like, boy, these phones are an awful lot like tricorders and, and communicators. Well... Yeah. That's what the people that invented it thought, too. You know, that reminds me, I saw an article yesterday about how Jon Stewart changed the world. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, because uh, tonight, or, yeah, tonight is his last photo fo- show. Yeah. Uh, not his last photo show. Fo- show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no. his, it's his um, last uh, daily show. Yeah, but, but like, different things that he's talked about or scrutinized or, like, like dedicated a, a whole show to, like, uh, like, according to this article, actually changed and passed things, and it's really cool. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, More so this next travel? thing, sort of, it's um, it's not quite in the air, but uh, and it, it actually looks like he has it coming out of his butt. It does. But basically, <laughs> it's kind of cool. I think I would like to try this. Oh wow! It's super loud. That's why I don't have the volume up. Oh come on, turn it up just a little bit. Let's just get a taste. Because really? I have it turned down on the board, so we can we can yeah, you can do it. I'll, I can. Oh boy, yeah, that's awful. No, keep it up though. It's good to hear. It gives us ambiance. So this is like a, uh, how would you describe this to the audio listeners? How can we explain so this? So it looks like a unicycle uh, and he's uh, sticking roller, out of his butt. And but he's got a rollerblades on. Yeah, he's got rollerblades on and he's got a, what looks like a combination of a unicycle with a weed whacker with handles behind him. And he like, is, I mean, how fast do you think he's going? At least f- like ha- five, I, ten miles per hour? At least. Maybe faster? Maybe. Because, like, look at that wind blow on his... That on is his, so cool, though. Yeah, I mean, that guy is hauling bowels. A butt motor, a butt trike. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a butt trike, exactly. Yeah. They call it the uh, roller cycle, huh? Yeah. 
That is so it, effing and impressive. It's really cool. He's got a little side saddlebag. Yeah, he does. So he can it. carry stuff. Yeah. This is no joke. Yeah. I, I, they must be chasing this guy with a car, right? It would be... I don't know. He's on grass, oh, yes. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the other yeah, thing. He's, he's not on like easy terrain. He's not on nope. cement. He's on dirt and grass yeah. next to the road. Yes. This it is actually be, surprisingly cool. Yeah, it would be a neat new sport. And like, if they could make tracks specifically or terrain specifically where you could look at him look at him pushing off with his rollerblades Ange. yeah i know i i would like to uh invest in this let's find a kickstarter for it (laughs) uh, this would be a great way to commute to the studio um i'm just like oh my gosh i'm loving this it's so wood i'm loving this although you know what your legs are probably exhausted by the time you're done well but more shapely all right close that before it plays another one because youtube just auto plays that as now those yeah, that, jerks. Yeah, c- Link to that <laughs> is in the show notes. <laughs> I'm Connie says he likes it except for that whole coming out of the butt part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It needs some refinement in the way it looks. It does. All right, so that kind of looked like a makeshift item from the future, Andrews. Yeah. We went right. from the extremely high tech to the extremely practical tech. What do we got next Oops, not this. in the uh, faux show future travel bag? Okay. We've already talked about this, I think, either in Tech Talk Today or maybe even Faux Show. Amazon proposes drones-only airspace to facilitate high-speed delivery. Yeah, so airspace this, dedicated to drones. Right, and this huh. is this is a recent article, like a couple days ago. Yeah, this is a new thing. And Have you seen the vi- no. video? No, I don't it, think so. Do you want to play it? Yeah. Let's see if we can get take, taken down by YouTube. Just hit, hit allow right there. It's saying, hey, did you, hey, that full screen button you just clicked made it go full screen. That's what I was just saying. So this video is from The Guardian. Okay, so it's somebody or- 30 minute delivery. Somebody's ordering from their tablet. Oh, is this the YouTube video? I have seen this one perhaps. So you click and play it though. Uh, yeah, so the idea is somebody on their tablet orders Prime 30 minute delivery and then somebody at the Amazon warehouse, eventually a robot. S- yeah, well, so here's something I didn't realize that with this 30 minute delivery and drone delivery, they're using a specific container. Yes. An and it's Amazon only- specific container. Yep. And it can only weigh a certain amount. And it's a certain size. Let's see, because it clips right into the drone there and then the drone, the drone snaps it on. Yeah. Which, you know, if you think about it, to, to guarantee safety, that's how they'd have to do it. Yeah. And so then the drone takes off out of the big, um, like, bay door. Amazon warehouse, yeah. It look, Yeah, it kind of looks like an Amazon lunchbox. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people make jokes about, oh, I'll shoot it down and get the well, loot, stuff like that. Yeah, well, so they're... So the idea is it's using GPS, and I guess maybe you'd have to, you'd think you'd have to, like, tag a space in your house, in your yard. Right, Like or the exact latitude yeah. and longitude or and whatever. And you think it'd have to, like, maybe use your and Wi-Fi to get it. They're standing there waiting. Well, wouldn't you be? I would be. I'd be like, <laughs> here it comes, guys, here it comes. And, you know, the kids would be excited. One thing that I haven't looked up is how do you return that container? Oh. Y- y- there might be, you know, like Netflix originally? Yeah. Just drop it in the mail, we'll take care of it. Might be something like that. Yeah. Bring yeah. it to your local... UPS picks it up. Sure. Something like that. They could also have drone recovery drones come pick it up Maybe. if you set it out. But yeah, it seems like that'd be a hard thing for the drone to get right. To retrieve yeah. a small item like that. Yeah. Because in this a warehouse, it goes to a very specific place on right. a belt. Right. And it's, yeah, where it's docked. Yeah. So this is a really interesting... Um, get it. So this bigger. is their airspace proposal here, and they're like they sectioning w- off like to the no-fly s- at 400 feet there. Yes. This is what Amazon wants. Okay. They want the 200-foot... Well, they want zero to 200 foot delivery space. Boy, you'd be able to see just that. Just for them. You'd be able to see that. And that's, what, what really is going to be flying in that area? Birds. <laughs> Birds. <laughs> that's probably it, right? <laughs> and um, so they'll use under 200 feet for local and low speed traffic areas and the 200 to 400 feet for high speed transit. So that would be, you know, like oh, probably the Drones further. that are really moving. Yeah. But, and they're also suggesting that the 400 to 500 foot be a no fly zone. That so seems pretty, that seems pretty doable. Except where there's an and, airport. Yeah, and then an airport, the whole anything. area is right. no drones at all. Right. Because yeah, you got a plane's coming Which up and sense. down. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, the thing is, is so that what's the, the practical uh, implication there would be if, so these low uh, 200 feet uh, and, uh, and low risk uh, ones, mm-hmm. uh, the slow ones. Mm-hmm. That would mean in, in busy areas where there's a lot of deliver- deliveries, like say downtown Seattle, mm-hmm. then the world would it, there you would just have drones buzzing above I know, all the time. It would be the Jetsons. <laughs> you think it's great? <laughs> I find it slightly no, creepy because no, all of them could have creepy. a camera. And, it is creepy, oh, okay. but it, it reminds it me is of kind of neat though. You and know? It, you get like it, it seems like obvious that's where it no, has to go. It's going to set the path for flying cars. Hmm. 
You know, if we can figure it out on a small scale, Maybe. like with drones. We might not need flying cars. I if we could get stuff moved around in lickety split time and we have self driving vehicles to move well, our slow true. butts yeah, when we, we don't need. need to go anywhere. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. That's interesting. Though. I'd well, like to see where Amazon gets with that. Here's what I suggest to Amazon, oh, right? Yeah? Because I'm a genius. Bring it in, Angela. Start doing this, and every package that you deliver just has animal crap in it. Jesus <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that a way. A box of dung? Yes. That way. You'll find out, A, how many will get shot down. Okay. And all those people will get an awesome treat. Yeah, you know, the chat room's <laughs> like, yeah, this is so, Account Zero says that would never work in my neighborhood. Uh, people would just steal the drones as soon as they land. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And what about apartments? Like, is it going to fly in the hallways? It's going to do the oh, lobby. the main office. The lobby, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 How long until people fly in drones are going to need drone licensing? I bet that's going to happen immediately. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, any way to get... If, if you ever, like, actually sit down and... Look at all the costs of insurance and licensing and maintenance and all this crap that we have to do. How is life livable? It's not. It's crazy. You just get by. You know? Oh. And you know what else that calls for? <laughs> Seriously. All right, Angela, do you have any more future it's travel insane. gadgets uh, or devices? Yes, and I'm actually really excited about this, except for who's making it. <laughs> Facebook has made a solar-powered plane to deliver internet. Yeah, and I wonder, do you think this is ever, I mean, wow, look at that, they actually built a plane. This is, it's kind of genius, honestly. It's a big, it's wider than an, a normal aircraft. It looks like a, But yeah. weighs less than a car. And so it's a drone that can, that it, beams down internet. And, and it's solar powered, solar panels on top. I don't think that's possible. It, it is. I, I'm skeptical, I don't okay, think it's, well, you, got, you got a video? Yeah. All right, well, if it's in video, then it must be true. I think I'll... No, don't mute it. Oh. Come on. All right. Facebook has a very, very big and bold mission, Full which is that to is. make the world more open and connected, primarily focused on regions where there just isn't internet connectivity. And that's why we're really invested in solar-powered aircraft and lasers as a mechanism to do that. There is no one solution for all countries because population distribution in countries is very different. In some areas, there is the satellite solution. Other areas, terrestrial links. And then for some areas, we are looking at high-altitude airplanes. We're building a very lightweight, very large wingspan aircraft capable of flying above normal airliners, above 60,000 feet. Wow. For up to yeah. three months at a time. Wow. Not even anybody's yeah. flown anything for greater than 14 days under power. We knew from the initial calculations it needed to be a very lightweight, but very stiff design. This is 88 gram uh, T700 carbon fiber. It's been cured. That's about three times as strong as steel and lighter than aluminum. Wow. And it's also quite lifty. So when you walk across a windy car park with it, it does try to fly at your hands. Have you done that? We've tried that, yeah. Of course we have. Of course we've tried that, it's yeah. It's a Facebook U2, exactly. A ground station will transmit our radio and internet signal to a mother aircraft. And that will then Look at feed that, other aircraft oh, really? in the cool. using laser technology. Lasers. And they will provide you radio internet coverage. We have to challenge every assumption. We have to challenge the means by which internet is delivered itself. People have been using uh, light to communicate, send messages uh, for a long, long time. We turn the beam on and off, but you do that at billions of times a second. And at Facebook, we are working on advancing the state of the art by at least a factor of 10 to 100. It poses challenges. We try to hit a dime from a couple of miles away. So that's how accurate to be to point the beam to the target. In the 11 meter space we have here in the lab, we're simulating 40 kilometer propagation in the atmosphere. Wow. So, Andrews, when you watch this, uh, do you think to yourself, uh, this is like, uh, like, uh, like, almost obvious in a sense? Like, we have to be able to deliver internet in ways other than we're delivering it now. But, th or do you yeah, look at this well, and think it's like a crap project that's never going to go anywhere? No, no, I think it's genius. I think there are a lot of countries that can't afford the infrastructure to have this avail, you know, to have yep. internet available. Yep. And yeah. how how amazing would it be to connect them? I th what, what I was really 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 excited until Google kind of quietly bailed on Project Loon, which was their they kind of were doing something like this only with big balloons, mm -hmm. and um, 
they kind of bailed on it. And Facebook kind of had another initiative they had started before that they kind of bailed on. But this one's a little different. And this one, you know, I mean, they have some serious challenges to overcome. But holy crap, would it be amazing. If they could break it up from Facebook itself, that would be really great. Yeah, I know. It is kind of weird that Facebook is the one. But well, they have again, a lot of incentive to get people on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They, they want more people. It's actually one of the things I think is preventing their growth is there's just not, you know, they're starting to run out of more. They need more people on the net. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, I, I think it would be really, really cool. I, I do have concerns, you know, about, like, Privacy? it is solar power. Pa- no. Oh. Well, I mean, I get, yes, yes, but that wasn't what I was going to say. Um, it's solar powered, but, you know, what if that falls out of the sky? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, ah. Well, that's true for everything, <laughs> That wouldn't be though. good. That's I know, but, like, and then, and so it's going to fly above airplanes, above 60,000 feet, mm-hmm. I think is what mm-hmm. he said. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um that's kind of crazy. Angers, is there anything else to cover in this week's episode of The Foe? Let's see. Yes. Um, we have an announcement. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Uh, uh, is it uh, in regards yes. to our plans at uh, LinuxCon 2015? Dun, 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 dun. In fact, at LinuxCon 2015, there's a lot going on. And one of the things we're on the days we're going to be there Tuesday, August 18th, uh, which is in Seattle, is an open source t-shirt contest what the hell is this about Andrews? yeah so there's something called a booth crawl and that is when judges will walk around and look at people's open source t-shirts and judge them yeah and, and i'm looking at this and i see so we have judges uh sean kerner from eweek some guy named brian lunduke from network world and a third judge coming, coming soon. soon well we actually have an exciting announcement right here on the faux show because that third judge is our very own angela fisher that's right dun 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 hey angela hi Guess what? You're the new judge. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yep. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's Angela Fisher, everybody. The guy at the Linux Foundation reached out to me personally cool. and asked if I would be a judge. Nice. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, so that will be fun. <laughs> because, uh, you know. So if people are going to come, they can uh, wear an awesome shirt and maybe you'll judge it for them. And they can, yep. if they say, There's three I'm categories. a social viewer, maybe she'll give you a, I don't know. I'm not saying she's going to throw it, but I'm saying she might throw it for you. <laughs> uh, so there's three categories. Best vintage, funniest open source. And most creative open oh, source like that. Yeah, most so, creative open source is cool. Yeah, too, so all open source shirts. And vintage, so huh? That's what's interesting. What's crazy, the pressure is real. I've got to figure out which shirt I'm going to wear. <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, or shirts. Maybe yeah. I should change it. And uh, wow. I, don't wow. have, I don't have the details, uh, but uh, like the specific details, like am I looking at shirts all day or is it just for like an hour? If the booth crawl, I don't know exactly what time that is. But, but the winner will be announced at 7 o'clock. So if you are coming, if you're local and you're coming, uh, be there on Tuesday at 7 I'm sure we'll have an anecdote in the faux later, too. Oh, also, speaking of the faux, no faux show next Sunday. We're taking next weekend off because of scheduling issues. Mm -hmm. That's also why we're live on Thursday this week. But you can always check out all of that stuff at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. And... Don't forget that the Faux Show Awards are coming up, and I will do that award show once I have enough submissions. I do not have enough submissions. So I want to hear your computer porn skits. Dirty skits. Dirty, (laughs) something maybe involving Linux, something funny, Yeah, but a little dirty. Write your own potentially horribly geeky porn skit and email it in, okay? Now, you don't, it doesn't have to just be text. It could be a video. Uh, It doesn't have to be a comic. It doesn't have to be with people. I've gotten a submission where two different uh, devices are interacting. So, um... (laughs) Interfacing. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it's just it's just going to be fun, and uh, everybody wins. So submit that by emailing Angela at jupiterbroadcasting.com. There you go. Send in a, a picture or a link to your YouTube video. Um, include your IR Scenic. And, uh, and I already have ideas for the next Faux Show Awards. So let's get this one done so we can get to the next one. Yeah, right. She's ready to go. All right, so, Andrew, take us out of here. All right, that is it for this episode of the Faux Show. We will see you in two weeks. Did you enjoy this photo show? Well, guess what? You can catch more at jupiterbroadcasting.com and subscribe to the weekly RSS feed. Mm, Good call. Good call. It's for people who like to mess with computers. What? 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 Just Why? Sit. I know. It's because it's Googs. Why? Googs wants to... Because they, they have to track every video you watch. They have to know what Jeez account to track Louise. it to. Oh, God. That's loud. Well, it's crickets, babe. What do you expect? <laughs> Okay, okay, wow. Get with the program. Uh, okay. All right. All right, okay. All right, all right, all right, boss. You ready? Oh. Uh, hello, 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 hello. That's how we go. Uh, That's how we roll. (laughs) Okay. All right, get ready, lower third. All right, here we go. Just...